Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. Slowly but surely, the U.S. is coming around to cannabis. Years ago, this map of states where pot is legal was gray. Now it's flush with green. Washington State is one of those pioneering places, and companies there are raking in the sales. More than $1.3 billion last year, and more than half a billion so far this year. Canex Capital is Washington's big kahuna. It owns two cannabis cultivation facilities with a combined 60,000 square feet of growing space. They churn out more than 19,000 kilograms of cannabis per year. A nearby processing plant pushes out product, including valuable extracts and oils. All told, they represent a lean, mean marijuana machine that appears to be the best of the best. Canex produces more than 500 grams of cannabis per square foot of growing space. That towers above industry averages for both greenhouse and indoor growing operations. Canex enjoys all-in production costs of just 75 cents per gram, putting it way out front of the bulk of the competition. Canex wants to be more than a one-state pony, though. The company wants to spread its reach across the U.S. Canex recently acquired California company Jetty Extracts and has its sights set on other states as well. It's all part of CEO Anthony Dutton's plan to nab a significant slice of a U.S. market that could be worth more than $25 billion by 2025. Anthony, this of course is a very exciting space and there's lots of money to be made and uh, investors are trying to figure out who the winners are gonna be. But do you think that the long game ultimately for cannabis related companies is uh, not so much what they do, but how they brand themselves? Absolutely, I mean, we're already hearing a lot of people speak about this, consumer branded goods. It's kind of the, the flavor of the day, if you will. And ultimately, I think cannabis is going to evolve into be a consumer packaged goods or a consumer branded goods uh, market segment, whether it be recreational or, or medical. Now you're focused on the United States and you've called the U.S. the next great frontier mm -hmm. for cannabis. So why do you say that? And, and what are the, what are the, uh, the key objectives for your company in, in the U.S. the next year or so? Right, okay. No, it's, it's the next frontier for us and I think for many people for the same reason. It's, it's huge. I mean, it's 10 times bigger than Canada. Um, so obviously we see this critical mass there, the total addressable market. Um, and Americans have already expressed a strong support for cannabis. I think 65% in the last poll support some form of regulated cannabis market, which is obviously a very positive thing for the industry. You know, our main objectives over the next 12 months are really going to be California focused. California is as big as Canada. We've already made our first strategic acquisition into California called Jetty Extracts. It should close in the next two or three weeks. But they have a very strong brand, a very sophisticated processing and extraction facility in Oakland, California. They're one of the key um, brands that is distributed on a company called Ease, which is think of like Ease, like Amazon for weed. Uh, we also have the five top PAX SKUs, PAX being one of the most uh, highly regarded um, vaping hardware. So we've already got great inroads into the state of California, and we just want to continue and start to become a dominant brand in the state. And what are going to be some of the catalysts in the next year or so for, uh, for your company? Well, I think that the catalyst, the short-term catalyst, the things that everybody is waiting for is that we're going to be filing our year-end financials on the 28th of August. Our year-end was the 30th of April, so we're, we're almost there, so the next couple of weeks, and then ultimately closing of the jetty transaction. So we're in the final few weeks of that. It was a bit more complicated than we'd expect. It was a cross-border transaction, and there's always a few things that uh, sort of slow things down. But those are two going to be very significant catalysts. And that, that ultimately puts us back into what I call the multi-state platform narrative. You know, when we started Canex on the 14th of March, we were literally, you know, one state, Washington. Um, we'd always said we wanted to be a multi-state player. And once we close the Jetty acquisition, um, that will put us into a second very large state. As I said already, it's as big as Canada. Uh, and then we've got a couple of more opportunities that we're looking at very, very closely. And ultimately, we're looking to be a national coast-to-coast -coast, you know, retailer, distributor of premium brands. You touched on the financials coming out at the end of the month. I know there's only so much you can say, but is, can you give a little peek behind the curtain as to what people could expect? Well, I can talk a little bit about the operating company's performance last year prior to our ownership, and they did approximately $27.6 million U.S. in revenues, and we're profitable. Uh, so you're going to see some uh, positive uh, results in our financials this year. 
So you mentioned uh, Jetty Extracts. You've made other acquisitions. You're presumably going to make more. What do you look for uh, in, in a company when, when you're looking to make a deal? That's a great question. And what, one of the opportunities for for Canadian companies that have access to capital is to provide that capital to proven operators in the U.S. who historically have been a little bit restricted in terms of their ability to grow their business because they've had challenges accessing capital. So Jetty's kind of a, a perfect type of company for us. It's 60 guys, three partners. They cobbled together a few million dollars from friends and family and they built a phenomenal company. Uh, very strong brand, very strong work ethic, very strong uh, production extraction processes and give them more money and they're going to grow that top line aggressively. So really ultimately you know one of the key ingredients to a high growth company is access to capital. So we see ourselves as being able to provide access to capital. We've got some very strong uh, operating synergies with our group in Washington State. We've got the ability to do what we call cross branding of our brands. So for example some of the leading brands that we currently distribute in Washington could be taken into California. Some of the California brands can be brought into, uh, into Washington and ultimately we build out our brand portfolio that way. Now you've talked primarily, Anthony, about the U.S. market, but uh, Canex wants to be in Canada, in, in Europe, internationally as well. So what's the geographic uh, footprint look like eventually, do you think? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a very difficult question to answer right now, other than that we're very opportunistic and we see cannabis as ultimately being a, a, global, a global brand. So we're not out to um, trailblaze or you know, get people to change laws. But, you know, if there's an opening and, uh, you know, we've been invited already by a couple of company countries, I should say, in Europe to, you know, they're just learning about the market. So we see, you know, we have a core competency. We have a core understanding of the business. Uh, we have access to capital. So under the right circumstances, it's probably nowhere that we wouldn't go. But I think one of the things that's very important for investors to, to really appreciate is that wherever we go, whether it be California or Europe or Canada, it has to be a disciplined approach. You know, we are very focused on our core operating skill set. And if we're trying to do too many things at once, you know, like anybody that tries to do too many things at once, we're ultimately going to drop a few balls and we don't want to do that. And lastly, uh, Anthony, uh, you know that there's a big land grab going on in the cannabis sector. You're part of it. Investors are trying to to find the winners, they're trying to figure out uh, which way they should look. So uh, how would you say Canix Capital is different and, and how, do you, how do you stand out from the crowd? Well, the best way, to, best way in my opinion, to, to pick a winner is to pick somebody who's already winning. And the definition of winning, in my opinion, in terms of the cannabis market, is people who have already demonstrated you know, operational excellence at scale. So, you know, we have 300 employees. We do a million unit single servings a month. We have the highest yields in Washington State. I mean, I could go on and on with our statistics. But, you know, in terms of operations, we are already winning. You know, we dominate Washington. We've moved in very aggressively to California. So, you know, I think that should help uh, an investor understand some differentiation between a company like us, for example, who's already doing it, and other companies who are saying, well, invest in us and we're going to start doing something next year, we hope, you know. Uh, I, I think that really it's important to remember that in five or six years from now, maybe even less, you know, I think people are going to be kind of over the excitement of it being cannabis. It's just going to be evaluated like a, a typical consumer branded goods company or an operating company, you know, margin analysis, allocation of capital, cost of capital, you know, all of the things that are important to any operating company. And I come from a fundamental operating background from the aerospace sector. My operating partners, their families own the largest specialized seafood company in North America. So we understand operations. And that's really, I think, what sets us apart from a lot of companies.